Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. I'm George Conley with Scratch Golf Tips, and today we're going to be talking about the chipping motion. More specifically, how do we shallow out the pitching motion or the chipping motion to work away from chunking your chips? Now having a nice clean line in the fairway and a 20 yard chip and looking up at that pin and thinking that you're gonna hit it at three feet and then chunking it only a few inches is one of the most miserable things to do on the golf course. It's such a bad feeling. Believe me, I've been there a time or two. So today I'm going to offer a drill and a few explanations surrounding that drill that are gonna help us uh, shallow out the pitching motion. Now the reason that we're gonna to work towards a more shallow pitching motion is because generally if we're gonna chunk the ball, it's because our wedge is going to come in a little bit steep a little bit across the body out to in and because of that it's going to dig into the ground a little bit and once this leading edge digs into the ground before it gets to the ball so many of these wedges are just going to keep digging down and once it keeps digging down by the time it gets to the ball it's taken on so much grass that you're barely going to move the ball forward. So here's an image of the setup that we want for this drill. We want the ball to be teed up almost comically high. Just so that ball can be a few inches off the ground, it's going to allow us to uh, address these shots and visualize these shots a little bit differently. So with the ball up a little bit higher, you don't feel the need to scoop up at that ball. Again, these wedges are very highly lofted. Uh, you know, usually a, a pitching wedge is 46 degrees. Sometimes we have a gap a gap wedge in the 52 to 54. Uh, this is, I believe, a 60 degree, yep. You do not need to help these golf balls up. It's not, you, you need to hit down on them. That's the nature of the wedges, that's the nature of irons, that's the nature of everything in your bag except for your three metal and your driver. So if we're coming across and picking up at that golf ball, what we're gonna do is we're gonna expose that leading edge. And that leading edge is going to do one of two things. One, it's going to dig into the ground like I showed earlier with my hand, and it's going to get grass, and it's just gonna scuttle up to the ball and have it dribble a few yards. Two, you're actually going to expose it too early. It's going to miss the grass entirely. And this leading edge is what's going to hit the golf ball. And when that leading edge hits the equator of the golf ball, the, the, it's gonna be thinned right over the green. So now, shallowing out that club and having a more in to out, if we're thinking about this in terms of ball fights, more of a draw, we're gonna feel a draw on this chip. Having it shallow out is gonna keep this uh, fairly neutral to the ground and the ball is just gonna pop right up ideally and that's something that we can feel when that ball is elevated off the tee. The reason that we need the ball elevated off the tee is because if we're just keeping the ball on the ground, it won't feel as natural to come in with a little bit more shallow motion. It's going to feel awkward, especially for people who normally chunk their chips and normally come across the ball with more of a fade path. Coming through it with a shallower path is going to feel awkward, so having that ball a few inches up alleviates any awkwardness because it's so easy to make contact with the ball. There's you know, nothing else to bump into, maybe the T, but it's certainly a visual thing to look at. And if you have it maybe three inches off the ground, get really shallow, maybe film this from behind. So if you're a right-handed golfer, have the camera pointed behind your right shoulder in, in this angle, just so that you can visualize that path. And then once you get comfortable, maybe hit 10 chips with it, uh, find, be sure to find the sweet spot of the club. You know, anyone can make contact off the toe or the heel, but keep getting that sweet spot of the club. And then if, if you're finding a little bit of a groove, bring the tee down an inch. Now you're at two inches, certainly still high, still a little bit irregular. Uh, other people around you might be looking at you thinking, what are you doing? But you're improving your game, so let them be. And then get comfortable at that height. Then one inch, get comfortable at that height. Then I want you to just barely get it above the ground. So similar to how you tee it up uh, if you were hitting a wedge on a, on a full shot on a par three, for instance. And then it's just about comfort. Then after you hit it with that very small height, get rid of the tee entirely, maybe hit some out of the rough so that you're still, you, now you're hitting it without the tee, but that ball remains a little bit higher if you have a nice lie in Bermuda rough or even bent grass rough. Finally, take it out on the fairway, get, get some thin lies, get some fluffy lies, do what you gotta do. With any drill like this, the, the principles are always there, but what is missing is spending time with it and being comfortable with it. I, I, I can give any golfer a million different drills and none of them are gonna do anything unless you're willing to put the time in, you're willing to go through the frustration that comes with doing that drill so that you can get the result that you want. I hope this drill is gonna help you out. I know that it will take a little bit of time to get used to it, so fight that frustration for just a few minutes. Trust me, it'll be worth it. And see how you 
like a more shallow swing. I will note that when you are coming through on a little bit more shallow angle, you are going to put some draw spin on the ball. So if you're a right-handed golfer, that ball, if struck well, if uh, struck cleanly, will have a little bit right to left spin in it. It's also going to roll out more than if you have a fade spin on it. So uh, me saying that means one thing, but it really comes down to you practicing it, trying to fade and draw your chips just so you can get a feel over a shallow and steep angle of attack. There are absolutely uses for the steep shot. If you're gonna hit the, the flop shot, it's very difficult to hit that when you're shallow. You need to kind of come across with an open face. So experiment with it, see how the spin works. Experiment with different clubs, you know, hit some shallow shots with a 52, with a 60. Maybe try it with a seven iron bump and run. Just experiment and spend your time wisely. If you have any questions or comments on things that I've brought up throughout this video, leave them in the comment section down below. We read and reply to all comments on these videos. If you'd like to see more content from Scratch Golf Tips, feel free to subscribe to the channel as well as turn on post notifications so that you're notified every time we post a new video. If you enjoyed this video, I would personally appreciate it very much if you left a like rating. That helps do two things. One, it helps YouTube show this content to more people who will find it helpful. And two, it helps me see what type of content you are all enjoying so that I can cater future uploads to what you guys want to see. Thank you all very much for watching. Play well and take care.